Good morning, church. Good morning at home. Um, Pastor Chris has asked me to open, and so um, <laughs> let me start with reading this, um, and then I'll just share what kind of stuck out to me. Um, May we be forever mindful today, O God, that you are in your dwelling place. Give us full knowledge and awareness of your, oops, um, of your saving presence, a presence that surrounds us at all times and reveals itself in love, compassion, and truth. Make yourself known to us today so we may dwell in you and you in us. Amen. Um, And so what really kind of stuck out to me um, was was the last sentence there, may we dwell in you and you in us. And so I know Pastor Chris talks often about us posturing um, ourselves. And so um, I'll, I'll pray this again, and I would just ask us all to ready ourselves for our service this morning because I know that God wants to move in us, um, and he's, he is ready, so let's get ourselves ready. Um, so here we go. Let's pray together. May we be forever mindful today, O oh God, that you are in your dwelling place. Give us full knowledge and awareness of your saving presence, a presence that surrounds us at all times and reveals itself in love, compassion, and truth. Make yourself known to us today so we may dwell in you and you in us. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Stephanie. Well, this this morning we have announcements from Sarah. Hey, church, Sarah here coming to you. Hey church, Sarah. Hey church, Sarah here coming to you live this time from Breckenridge, Colorado. Dwayne and I are on a getaway for our anniversary, so it's been nice to be able to enjoy nature and it's been gorgeous out and just been some time together. So announcements are coming to you from Breckenridge, so it's like you're here with us as well. Um so a few announcements, not a lot today. Um but let's first For those that are getting through school, teachers, parents, um, parents that are teachers and kids, let's continue to pray for them as the school year is just getting started, but still some have had a very rocky start. So let's continue to pray for all that are involved that um, they can still learn and that parents still have patience uh, with the kids and that the teachers, while great teachers, are not IT people. So being asked to do a lot. So let's continue to pray for them. So yesterday, Val's service, amazing tribute to Val and like nothing else to be expected, all decorated in Christmas. So she would have loved that. Thanks to everyone that came. Certainly appreciate that, and we will continue to miss Val. A book that the church board is reading for anyone that is interested, and let me just get the name of it. It is called Eternal Current, and it is by Aaron, and I'll probably butcher the name, Nyquist, N-E-I-Q-U-I-S-T. Highly encouraged for anybody that would like to read it. So feel free to pick up that book, order the book, and read it along with your church board. Also, Wednesday night, prayer time. If you would like to come to church, it will be open from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Feel free to come and have some prayer time, pray with the pastors, but the church will be open. And last but certainly not least, thanks everyone for continuing to give to the help box. We are in need of some toiletries, so if you can drop off some items, that would be great. Toothbrush, toothpaste, soap would be greatly appreciated, and deodorant. Everyone have a great, safe, long weekend. Enjoy Monday being off and not being back to work or school till Tuesday. Until then, we'll be enjoying Breckenridge, and to everyone, have a great, safe, long weekend. Back to you, Pastor. Thanks, Sarah. Well, we were talking this morning in our worship team time and our prayer time that there's a lot of fear and anxiety still going around um, with school, work, job, the way the world is, wondering if you need to wear a mask or not wherever you go. And this song that we're singing this morning speaks to that. So this this verse 2 that we were going to sing this morning says this, When my fears like Jericho... If you guys remember the story of Jericho, it was walls that the Israelites had to figure out how to conquer. They walked around it, said, when, when my fears like Jericho build their walls around my soul, 
When my heart is overthrown, your love is my battle cry, the anthem for all my life. So this morning, we're going to sing that song. We're going to sing it over our own fears, over our own anxiety, and over the, the fears and anxiety that are happening within our congregation. And we're going to sing to it over um, with the love of Jesus. And we're going to declare that we're going to win a victory over that. So would you stand with us? be seated. Let's listen this morning as we hear scripture. Romans 12, 9 through 21. Love should be shown without pretending. Hate evil and hold on to what is good. Love each other like the members of your family. Be the best at showing honor to each other. Don't hesitate to be enthusiastic. Be on fire for the Spirit as you serve the Lord. Be happy in your hope. Stand your ground when you're in trouble. And devote yourself to prayer. 
Contribute to the needs of God's people and welcome strangers into your home. Bless people who harass you. Bless and don't curse them. Be happy with those who are happy and cry with those who are crying. Consider everyone as equals and don't think that you're better than anyone else. Instead, associate with the people who have no status. Don't think that you're so smart. Don't pay back anyone with their evil actions with evil actions, but show respect for what everyone else believes is good. If possible, to, to the best of your ability, live at peace with all people. Don't try to get revenge for yourself. My dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. It is written, revenge belongs to me. I will pay it back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. By doing this, you will pile burning coals of fire upon his head. Don't be defeated by evil, but defeat evil with good. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's take some time right now. Let's just close our eyes. I want you to invite the Holy Spirit to speak to you today. I want you to ask him to open your ears to hear the words that he wants to talk to you. I want you to ask him to open your eyes to see where he's at work in your life. Ask him to give you courage and hope. Ask him to remind you of his love for you. And if you're hurting or sick or afraid, ask him to heal that in you. Jesus, we come to you today with everything in our minds, in our hearts, and on our calendars and schedules. We, do, we believe you to be at work ahead of us. We believe you when you say that you love us and that you care for us. Lord, help us listen to you. Help us see you at work. Would you give us a new heart, Lord, if we have hearts of stone in us? Would you move us to follow your decrees and obey your laws? Lord, would you transform us inside so that everything that we do outside would be to proclaim the glory of who you are? We love you, Jesus. In your name. Stand with us.
chosen lamb, my perfect spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the King of glory and of grace. One with himself I cannot die, my soul is purchased with his blood, my life is hid with Christ on high, with Christ my Savior. Before the cross of Christ and marvel at this love divine, God's perfect Son was sacrificed to make me righteous in God's eyes. His river's depth I cannot know, but I can glory. Good morning, church. I've been asked to provide a short testimony as to how God has been speaking to me lately in my life. And my mind and my heart keeps coming back to the word thankfulness. I'm extremely thankful for my family and my family's continued good health. I'm thankful for my continued good health. I'm very thankful for my job, that my facility has been relatively untouched by the COVID virus, and I'm thankful that I've been able to work continuously since the outbreak. In difficult times like these, sometimes it's hard to spot the good things and the blessings that God gives us every day. On those days, I always try to remember that God is good, and God is good every day. He blesses my life in ways that I don't always recognize right away or that I'm able to spot easily. Sometimes I have to dig deeper and look hard to see the blessings that God gives me that sometimes I take for granted. On those days, when I pray in the morning, in the car, on my way to work, or even in the car on my way home from work. Those are my usual prayer times. I am thankful to God, and I thank him for the blessings seen and unseen that I have every day of my life, to have a home to come home to, a wonderful wife who I adore, a loving family. Everything that I have, I owe to God, and I'm never going to forget that. I hope during these difficult times you will hold your family, hug your family, love your family, and see the good things and the blessings that God has given you in your life today and every day. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate that. Um, 
yeah, I think that's, I think that's good um, to think about and realize that which is good, the blessings that are had, um, even in the midst of tension and hard times. So, yeah, thanks, Jeff. Well, let's continue um, in our worship service this morning in prayer. Um, um, there still continues to be uh, things, both, both good things, as Jeff has, has, has indicated, and, and things of struggle that we need to lift in prayer and to praise the Lord for. Um, so let's continue there. I'll pray. I'll, I'll lead out. Um, but if, if, if you, I'll, I'll leave a moment at the end of my prayer, but if you have, if you have anything you would like to lift up, I'll give a few minutes um, for anybody else to give voice at the end of my prayer. So, yeah, God, we are grateful. Um, and I, I uh, echo Jeff's sentiment that even in the midst of, of challenge, this idea to uh, be grateful anyways, uh, realizing that even in the midst of, you are still good, you are still at work, you are still speaking and moving in us. So God, we choose gratitude. God, in the midst of that, though, we, we recognize the tensions in life. We ask, God, that you, that you would step in, that you would indeed be present, that you would indeed reveal yourself to us. God, would you continue to walk with the Williamson family as they, uh, as they realize in a new way after yesterday's memorial service for Vel, her, her not being around. God, we thank you for that family. We thank you for the life and the friendship that Vel has been to so many. But God, we continue to speak life and, and hope over the Williamsons, over Bill. He continues to realize what has all transpired in the last month. God, we ask that you would be present to him. You would know your peace and your goodness. God, we continue to pray for Doug. Mary Lou, as they continue to navigate Doug's health concerns and all that is there, God, we continue to ask wisdom over the doctors as they try to figure out how to, um, how to best sustain Doug in health and strength. God, ultimately, we ask that you would intervene, giving health and strength to him and to Mary Lou as well. God, we thank you for them and their lives. And God, for those that, that continually are um, not with us physically, we pray, God. We know that so often and in so many cases, um, they are not here because of vulnerability and different other health risks of being out and about. God, I pray for Milt, our Jean, we do not forget them. So good to see them yesterday. For Sarah and Dwayne and their travels, their time away. For Jeff, I know, working at a facility that could be susceptible, we we stand with him in gratitude that there has been relatively no impact there. But as he protects himself to protect those he works with, we pray health over him. And God, for the kids, for the teenagers, the kids, the college students, all those who are in school, for the teachers. Um, I know the last couple weeks have been a lot, have been big, have been uh, 
difficult adjusting and figuring all of it out. God, I pray. I pray your, your courage, your hope over them, that, that, they, that they would walk forward well, knowing that you are with them, speaking life over them, even when things are different than normal. And God, this morning as we stand before you, as we sit here before you, as we worship, as we uh, interact with one another, as we pray together, God, I, I ask that your presence would be made known. God, may we be sensitive and aware of your work in us. I'll give us just a minute to sit. And if anybody wants to speak out, please feel free. Those online, please feel free to comment. Prayer, praise, both. Amen. Uh, Acts chapter 9. Verse 32, the end of the chapter 43. Acts chapter 9, starting verse 32. Now as Peter went here and there among all the believers, he came down also to the saints living in Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas who had been bedridden for eight years, for he was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your bed. And immediately he got up, and all the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they, had washed, when they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with, went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping, and showing, showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. And she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then, calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, my apologies, guys. Generally, that would have been the CEB, right? But it looks like I was reading out of the NRSV, so if there was a discrepancy... Between my words and those words, that's on me, not the sound guys, but it's the same story. Um, so, last week, uh, I got a phone call. It, so, it was um, um, Tuesday. Tuesday, late in the afternoon, I get a phone call. There's a homeschool group that meets here on Tuesdays, and she called. They were getting ready to leave, and 
and the, the, the men's bathroom urinal was just running and running and running and running. And every now and again, over the last several years, you know, at least since I've been here, every now and again, it would stick and just run. But not leaking everywhere, just running within the, the thing itself. And, um, and I told her, I said, well, just kind of give it a jiggle, you know, it usually, it usually pops loose or whatever. It, it didn't. She said, yeah, Pastor Chris, we've been jiggling it for about 20 minutes and, and it's not, you know, it's not unsticking. So, okay, well, I better come down and, and take care. I tried to instruct her where the water shutoff was, um, which, by the way, for those of you, it's in this back bathroom back there anyways. Um, so I came down here to, to turn it off and start the little project. I took things apart. I'm seeing, oh, it's, you know, there's some things in there. The, the rubber's starting to break down. The little valve in there was broken. And so I thought, well, fine, I'll run over to Home Depot, and I'm going, which is I don't know why my go-to, but here recently it seems like every time I go to Home Depot, I end up at Lowe's because Home Depot doesn't have what I'm looking for. And same was true to that day. I got down to Home Depot. I'm standing in the, in the plumbing department. I'm looking through all the parts, not seeing what I need. I finally ask a guy, and he's like, well, let me get whatever. I forget the other guys. Let me get him. He'll know better than me. And so, And to no avail did I get my parts. So I thought, well, that's fine. I'll just run over to Lowe's. I go to Lowe's, and I get there, and I'm looking, I'm looking, and there's a young gal there. She asked me if she could help, and well, sure, this is what I'm looking for. I show her the pictures on my phone. I'm looking for these parts, these things. This is for a urinal handle uh, in a men's room. And she's like, oh, yeah, well, I guess we don't have that kind of stuff, and she started to tell me. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a little plumbing place over on Park Street. And I said, oh. She says, yeah, you know where Park Street is. Park Street is. It's over there by, by the McDonald's. And, you know, you go down the street from McDonald's. And I told her, well, yeah, I was familiar with the area. Um, although, although I have only gone as far as the task force down here, the Help and Hope Center. Beyond that, there's a plumbing store. And so I get down to the plumbing store, and, um, and I don't have the parts with me. I just have my pictures. So I go in there, and I'm standing waiting. And as I'm standing there waiting, you hear the, 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 the world of construction. Uh, this, is, this is colorful language. This is... Um, this is language you wouldn't use in front of your mother. Even those guys probably wouldn't use in front of their mother, right? This was, this was this kind of experience. Now, listen, I've worked concrete. I've worked in construction areas before. I understand this language. I've heard it plenty. Um, it's, it's not terribly unusual for me, uh, although in my recent line of work it is. <laughs> um, but... But I was there, and I'm listening to this, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, this is that world. I know. I've, I've been here before. Maybe not in this space, but I've been here before. You know how that goes. It's recognizable language. They were speaking in tongues, and I could hear what they were saying, if you will. So I didn't tell them my vocation, not necessarily on purpose, didn't, just didn't come up. I just told them I was down the street working on a urinal, you know, whatever. Um, and they said, I was showing them the pictures. like, well, man, I don't, what, you know what brand it is? And I was like, oh, I, I don't, actually. Um, they're like, you know, if, if you just brought in the parts, it might be a little easier. Okay. So I ran down here. It's just, just right here. So I grabbed the parts. I go back down there. And when I got back down there the second time, However, the conversation shook out, but it came out that I was indeed the pastor at the church down the street at the urinal that I'm fixing. And, and the, the, the countenance changed. The, the language changed. The spirit of the place changed, actually. I don't, I don't fully understand. I mean, I kind of get it, but at the same time, I... You know, in some of the concrete and world that I work, they never cared that I was, like in college, I was a theology major. I was studying to be a pastor, right? And they did not care. It didn't change 
the language of the concrete guys. You didn't change the count. This time it does, and it does periodically. Ken, I don't know if you've experienced this before when you talk about working, in, working with youth or working in pastoral ministry. Um, the, the countenance changed. Stephanie, Shree, I don't know if you've experienced this, but I know this, that over the years when I sit in the chairlift with a stranger at a ski hill, when your vocation comes up, the flask goes away, the language changes, Everything's different. Now, I'll, I'll be honest with you. There are moments in pastoral ministry that I, that I miss this. And does that sound weird? There are moments. When I was a church planter, I worked also in other jobs. And there was this, this moment in life. Well, let me rephrase that. There were Every day's moments in life were rubbing elbows with those who were not necessarily church folk. Right? That, that, that there's this, this, this longing for me often. I want to rub elbows with these, with these folks. There's a Something inside of me that it wants to be able to speak the language, not their language, but to speak the language of the gospel into their lives. Now, this isn't the, the you know, Bible bashing, Bible speaking. You know, this isn't what I'm talking about. This is this, this sentiment where you begin to weave the Spirit of God into the culture in which you are a part. Oh, so carefully and gently most of the time. Although, when I was in Boise at one of the small little retail stores that I worked at, there was a whole bunch of conversation that bubbled up around us within the culture of homosexuality, and all that goes with it. And it was interesting for them to ask, Chris, what do you think? My guess is they were expecting me to be heavy-handed. My guess is they were expecting me to be judgmental and bold in my language condemning the oh-so-whatever, right? But what a beautiful chance I was given to speak into a situation with grace, with mercy, with love, with compassion. Because nowhere in Scripture are we to judge. Right? This story of Acts this, that we continue to walk through is this story, this story of a people being caught up in a compassion and a love for the culture around them that that oozed out of it. It bubbled over. Their cup runneth over, right? They were so captivated by a message that was saving them that they couldn't help overflow to, to spill out in the culture. This is the coming together. Simon the tanner. Anybody can tell me what a tanner is? You got it, Riley? You got it? Were you, sorry, were you a tanner? Oh, I thought they were... Oh, okay, all right. A, a tanner, Michelle. Dead animals. Yeah, dead animals. Can anybody tell me what dead animals and Jewish people have in common? Nothing at all. Impurity was the language. But, but did you catch it? Simon, Peter is staying with this other Simon. Did you catch it? He's staying with him. 
Meanwhile, he stayed. We're talking about Peter. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. In, in previous Jewish view, or maybe I should say in legalistic Jewish view, Simon would have been Peter, sorry, Peter, for the sake of Peter, would have been absolutely out of line. <laughs> Staying with Titaner. It would have been an impure place. But there's this, this coming together that the gospel speaks to us of. There's this, this message that is, to, that is to scoop everybody, to say all are welcome here, all can come, even the tanner. I will, in fact, I'll stay with you, right? It, perhaps even the same story when Jesus tells Zacchaeus, hey, I'm going to come to your house. I'm going to come stay with you. For maybe with a, a little... Um, um, well, I'll just, I'll just go with it. In, instead of, uh, with, maybe I say it this way. At the risk of uh, overusing last week's um, analogy, I'm going to go with it. And I hope we can catch it. But if you remember last week, I was talking about sports and things. Talking about um, the, the way we give ourselves to our sports teams and things. So, so let's, let's relive that for a minute. And, and let, me, let, let me open up my argument. This is a little bit in good fun, but it might be truthful. We'll see. In, in my opinion, I would say that Magic Johnson was the best basketball player ever. Magic, the magic man, the no-look pass, bread and the needle, triple doubles. I mean, he could play every position on the court, right? I mean, he played center, replacing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar one day when he was sick and injured. But he was a point guard at six foot nine, right? It, but the argument here is that what Magic did, here's what Magic did. Magic, he was the assist king of all time. Do you know what that means? The assist king. Can anybody help me? What, what, is it, what does it mean if you are the assist leader? What's that? Help somebody make a shot. Help somebody. What somebody? A teammate, anybody else that's not you. I think there's something to be said here about this countenance. There, you could say there is a new day in basketball, and it's five one-on-one -on -one games happening all at once on the same court. <laughs> Back then, it wasn't so much that way. You had, i throw Larry Bird in there, even though he was the enemy back in those days. But there was something special about this idea that you did not raise yourself to be king, but you raised your team to be a team. that you brought everybody with you to where you were going. It didn't matter. I'll never forget. Here's the counterpart to that. I'll never forget playing high school basketball with the church league. We, my little town of Susanville, won our rad days at the Sacramento District Basketball Tournament which meant we got to go compete 
with all these other churches around the state of California at Point Loma and Nazarene University. In the pit, if you've ever been in that gym, it's just this big hole in the ground. I'll never forget, I was on the court, and, and I wasn't, I was, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't the best on the team. But I remember pulling up for a shot, I was at three-point land out, out to the, the, well, to the right, I guess, I was shooting this way. I threw up a shot, I didn't make it, but here, here's, here's the, the voice I will never forget, my coach from the sideline, echoes across the building. Chris, that's not your shot! <laughs> shot, shot, shot. That is not the message of the Gospel. What do I mean by that? The message of the gospel is not is to not yell down damnation on the world, but to step into the world with a language that is the gospel. To step into the world with language that builds up the world, to step into the world that speaks a a gospel message that is lifting and love and grace, not pushing down, belittling, smacking. You, You hear the message that is coming through in this book of Acts. It is a people so filled with the Holy Spirit that even when they step into the house of the unclean, they are bringing with them a message of goodness and grace. So maybe it's okay. So maybe it's okay when I go into the plumbing store and they find out I'm a pastor that their countenance changes a little. Maybe that's okay. Maybe I can then have my chance to not beat them back with a stick, but to say, hey, not wash their mouth out with soap. To say, hey, come on. To bring a message of embrace to the world. When the Spirit of God is in us, there is a message that is life giving. Now, let's go a little further. This was. This was my my area of study in my master's program. It was called missional leadership. And that word missional, this is what I'm getting at today. Missional, going into into the world with a mission. And we might think, oh, if we're good enough, people will see our goodness. And by some sort of osmosis, they're going to think, oh, Yeah, I want Jesus. I want to help us here. That missionality, being on mission in this world, is a purposeful activity where we are looking for and finding ways in which to speak the thread of God's grace into the life of the world. So yes, be a good example, but be creative. Find ways. Find ways to speak your story into the culture. Because if we're just standing there watching with a nice smile on our face, we're not going anywhere. You hear me talk so much about habits and practices. This is why, so that when we are in the culture, when we have prepared our hearts on Sunday mornings and every morning, 
We are ready to step in to a culture that is so broken and speak life to it. We can watch today. But we can watch today online and on the TV people fighting about everything. It's not life-giving, even if you think you're right, or even if you are right. It's not life-giving. The spirit that sets us apart in the kingdom of heaven is a spirit that speaks life over others, that brings the conversation to life, not brings the conversation to death and brokenness. This is what's happening in the book of Acts. Peter stepping into this paralyzed man's life and saying, get up and walk. Make your bed. Stepping into the dead woman's bedroom and say, ah, be alive. This is the gospel message that we might live and breathe and voice life over each other and those around us. This is the message. No longer can we sit passively and hope that our pretty smile is going to change the world. But that we might ask the Lord God of heaven to fill us with His Spirit that we might have a message to proclaim that is life-giving. Anytime you speak online, I hope and pray that you ask yourself, is this of compassion? Is this of love? Is this of grace? Is this of God that I am speaking? Or is this of my own conviction and angst about the situation? I've got, a, I've got a little slide here that I want you to take a look at. And we'll, we'll, we'll close here. I'll, I'll wrap it up here. But I want you to spend a few minutes here. Oh, what's that top, the first line? Can we? There's something above forgiveness, isn't there? That's okay. We can, we can stick with it. Peacemaking doesn't mean passivity. It is the act of interrupting injustice without mirroring injustice. The act of disarming evil without destroying the evildoer. The act of finding a third way that is neither fight nor flight, but the, but the careful, arduous pursuit of reconciliation and justice. It is about a revolution of love that is big enough to set both the oppressed and the oppressors not passivity the movement of God's spirit within us it is a revolution of love that pushes us to act in the world in ways that give life not act in a world or in a way that brings death to the world Spend a minute with that, and then we'll, we'll close up. But read it over to yourself. If you're online at home, or if even you're online here in the sanctuary, and if you want to comment in the comments below, feel free.
peacemaking. It doesn't mean passivity. It's the act of interrupting injustice without mirroring injustice. You hear that? Interrupting injustice without mirroring injustice. Disarming evil without destroying the evil doer. act of finding a third way that is neither fight nor flight, but a careful, arduous pursuit of reconciliation and justice. It's about a revolution of love that is big enough to set both the oppressed and the oppressor free. This gospel message that we find in the book of Acts. I pray, oh, I pray that that we would be a people both inside these walls and outside these walls that is deeply moved and shaped by this gospel message that is not just simply moralism. There's a revolution of love in the world. May we have voice in this world that is of Jesus and life-giving. May you go from this place having heard a word from the Lord today. May, we, may you enter your workspace learning the language of love to thread throughout the culture of that space. And may it be the Spirit of God in you is overflowing into those places. Amen? Amen. Go in His peace.